Okay, I'm going to work through a solution of Coulomb's experiment. Uh, so we have two identical charges, one and two. Uh, these have charge Q and mass M, and they are each hanging from a string of length L. The charges are repelling each other, and they come to rest as shown in the diagram. Use the values of M, L, and theta given below to calculate a value for Q. So, uh, the first step, we want to think about what forces are acting. The two charges are going to repel each other with electric forces. So charge 2 is exerting an electric force on charge 1, pushing it to the left. Charge 1 is exerting an electric force on charge 2, pushing it to the right. There's also going to be a force of gravity on each charge. And there will be a force of tension along the string for each charge. Uh, thinking about equations, we know an equation for the electric force. The force that charge 2 exerts on charge 1 is given by k, q2, q1 over d squared, where d is the distance between these charges. q1 and q2 are the same, but it's useful to label them just to be able to talk about them. The force that charge 1 exerts on charge 2 is given by k, q1, q2 over d squared. Notice that these two forces are equal. All I did was switch the order of Q1 and Q2. The force of gravity, you know, is mass times little g. We do not know the force of tension, but we do know that the net force in the x direction and the net force in the y direction are both zero because everything is at rest. So the first thing I want to do is I want to figure out d. I want to figure out how far apart the charges are. So we look at a little triangle we can make here with the uh, length of string, a vertical line, and a horizontal line. The bottom is half of the distance between the charges, d divided by 2. The hypotenuse of the triangle is L. We've been given that value, and the angle appears theta. We know that value. By SOHCAHTOA, sine of theta equals d over 2 divided by L. Plug in theta and L, and we figure out that d is 0 0.044 meters. Going back to our forces, the next thing I want to do is think about the force of tension here. And these forces are the same on each charge, so I'm going to focus on the right charge, charge number two. We're again going to make the same sort of triangle uh, along the string. We have the total force of tension. We can break that into a y component and an x component. And this angle here is again theta. It's again the angle between a vertical line and a line along the string, so it's the same theta we had in the last slide. So again, by SOHCAHTOA, the x component of tension is t sine theta, the y component of tension is t cosine theta. I can now write my net force in the x and y direction equations. The net force in the x direction is zero, which tells me that the electric force of charge one exerted on charge two has to be equal in strength to the x component of the tension. So k q squared over d squared equals t sine theta. The net force in the y direction is also zero, so the force of gravity is equal in magnitude to the y component of tension. mg equals t cosine theta. We now have two equations and two things we don't know. We don't know t and we don't know q. Sometimes in this situation, you might subtract one equation from another, trying to get rid of one of the things you don't know. What we're going to do is actually divide the top equation by the bottom equation. So we take t sine theta divided by t cosine theta equals kq squared over d squared divided by mg. The t's cancel out, and sine over cosine gives us tangent theta is equal to kq squared over mg d squared. We know theta, we know k, that's a constant that we can look up. We know m, we know g, and we already solved for d. So if I plug in all of my numbers, I end up figuring out that Q is equal to 8.595 times 10 to the minus 8 coulombs. Uh, this is the magnitude of the charge. All we know is that charge 1 and charge 2 are identical. They might be positive charges. They might be negative charges. But the magnitude of the charge is 8.595 times 10 to the minus 8 coulombs. Uh, this is the same equation as on the last slide. I've just written in all of the units. It's a good exercise for you to check that all of the units cancel out except for coulombs, that you really do get a value of Q that is some number of coulombs. 
Uh, if you do that, if you go to check that, you will want to remember that a newton, the newton up here, is equal to a kilogram times a meter per second squared. I'll leave that as an exercise for you. Uh, that is my solution to this problem. Let me make a quick comment about Dr. Kopp's solution, which was slightly different. If we go back to our triangle where we were solving for the value of d, we said that sine theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. If theta, the angle, up here is very small, and in our case, uh, theta is 5 degrees, that counts as small. If theta is very small, then the length of this side of the triangle is going to be very close to the length of this side of the triangle. So we could say that this side of the triangle that we don't know is pretty close to L. We could then say that tangent theta is equal to opposite over adjacent and find that D equals 2L tangent theta. This is only true because theta is a small value. Uh, at this point, we could solve for D and get a numerical value for D. Uh, Dr. Kopp did not plug in any numbers until the very end. So once he found that D equals 2L tangent theta, he went back to his tangent theta equals KQ squared over MGD squared equation, plug in 2L tangent theta for D, and we get tangent cubed of theta equals KQ squared over 4L squared MG. That's the solution from the Quest video. If I plug in numbers to this equation, I get that Q equals 8.545 times 10 to the minus 8 coulombs. A very similar but not identical answer to what we found previously. Uh, if you do enter three decimal points, as they're shown here, then Quest would consider the two answers equal, and either one should be counted as correct.